Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying Roadblocks to Hell, the Journey to Repentance. In this session, we'll be looking at Revelation chapter 20 and verse 11, all the way over to Revelation 21 and verse 9, 30 seconds into eternity. There are many myths about heaven and hell, but the Bible is very clear about the facts of our eternal destiny. Let's read our text. Revelation 20, verse 11 to 21 and verse 9. Let's just read that large text. <clears throat> and then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose face the, the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works, by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. And then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And then if you go to... Chapter 21 in verse 1, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. And then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her, bride, for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me saying, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. <clears throat> Let me ask you, seven, uh, excuse me, 30 seconds into eternity, what will be your destiny? Listen, 30 seconds into eternity, what will be your destiny? First, there is the retribution of hell for some. Revelation 21 and verse eight, but the cowardly, unbelieving, ab abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burns with hell, with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Hell is a place of eternal sensation. Revelation 14, verses 10 and 11. He himself shall also drink of the wine of the cup of wrath, which is poured out full strength from the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. 
Their torment ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest, day or night. Hell is a place also of eternal separation. Revelation 20 and verse 15, and anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. But listen, it doesn't have to be that way for you. Because second, there is the reward of heaven for others. Revelation 21, verses 3 and 4, and then verses 22 to 25. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. <clears throat> there shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then if you go down to verse 22, <clears throat> but I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light, and the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no light night there. The Bible teaches that heaven will be a place where we experience the rewards, the reward of provisions. It's, it's a fullness of knowledge. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 9 and 10. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. So there's a fullness of knowledge. There's a fullness of joy. Psalm 16 and verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It's a fullness of body. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. It's a fullness of worship. Revelation chapter 19, verses 5 and 6. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all of you his servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude as the sound of many waters and as the sound of mighty thundering saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. And then there's a fullness of service. Revelation 22, verses 3 and 4. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, <clears throat> and his servants shall serve him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And there are some things that heaven will not tolerate. There will be prevention of death, tears, grief, pain, temptation, and there will be no sun or moon nor night. And then second, there is the redemption of history. Or third, I should say, there is the redemption of history. John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. It was an intentional redemption. Not, man, not man's idea, but God's. Jesus purposely died to secure your destiny. Man has only two choices. In response to God's offer of salvation, by trusting Jesus in faith, receive or reject. It's either reception that leads to eternal joy or rejection that leads to eternal judgment. 30 seconds into eternity, there will be no choice. 
No change, no chance. Your decision on heaven or hell happens to be and happens on this side of death. Tony Evans said, have a good time at my funeral because I'm not going to be there. Do you have that kind of confidence? Do you know for sure <clears throat> that 30 seconds into eternity, your destiny will be heaven? Do you know that? You answer that question and do what you need to do for heaven or to just continue to hell. And you have a great day.